We return to the question of when is depth zero, and let's get an algebraic answer to this question. Okay, when is depth zero? Well, since y stands for the depth, depth is zero when y equals zero. That gives us this equation. We've substituted the values of a, b, and c found from the model, and we obtain this equation, which we easily solve for t from the quadratic formula. You recall the t is going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And this is an expression that we can easily evaluate. This expression will give us a time when t equals 0. If we have either a 0 or a positive number under this radical. Remember that this thing under the radical is called the discriminant. If the discriminant is 0 or positive, we're going to get at least one solution. If the discriminant is 0, then we'll have plus or minus 0 and we'll just get one solution. Uh, 0.903 divided by whatever we get when we multiply this denominator up, 0 0.00460, I guess. If what's under the discriminant is positive, then we're going to have a plus and a minus some number to add to the 0.903 over 0 0.00460. And then we're going to get two possible values of t. Uh, You'll note that one of those values occurs as the graph is descending and the other occurs as the graph is ascending through the t-axis. And one of those doesn't make any sense in the physical situation because the depth goes down, but it doesn't come back up, at least not under the physics of the situation that we set up.